So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy, Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So listen, man, real quick before we get into this video, man, I just had to sit down and have a real uh, conversation, a conversation, man, which was crazy because I say earlier this week or maybe last weekend, my kid came up to me. He's like, Dad, I know what I want to do for my birthday this this uh, year. I'm like, what? He's like, me and my friends, we want to go to the theme park. And I'm like, he's like, what? I'm like, he's like, are you, you don't like theme parks? I'm like, huh, I'm not really a fan. You know what I mean? And I told him why, you know, how the how my feelings were about it. Right. And I was like, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see about it. Not even a few days later, we get hit with the news of the guy in the Orlando theme park kind of shook my kid up. You know what I mean? You never want to be right in those situations with things like that. You never want to be. So he kind of came to me and was like, dad, like, did you see that story? And I was like, yeah. So we had to sit around, sit down and talk about the kid who, um, the tragic accident that happened at the Orlando theme park, man, which was crazy. So man, have those conversations with your kids, man, have those and prayers and condolences to the family. All right. But uh, yeah, that was that was real, real crazy. If y'all haven't heard about that story, look it up, man. Extremely crazy. Um, the next video we're going to get into, man, is the strange case of Michael Reese. All right. That chapter style. All right. <laughs> Shout out to that chapter. Uh, if, you, if you haven't already, make sure you go subscribe to them. If you haven't here and you new, hit that subscribe button. Join the fam and um, let's check out the strange case. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video, uh, we got uh, well, we got Reese's pieces or um, pieces of Reese's, and you know we got one of those good old triangles. By that I mean we got a town in nowhere, religious folk doing unreligious things, and just absolute Egypts. The triad of small town cases. You know those. Um, you thought this was a good idea? Really? Alabama bound, and without further ado, let's stop kicking the tires and give it a go. <music> to the town of Morris we go. Even the town name, uh, Morris. Uh. A little more than 2,000 people live there, a small town just north of Birmingham. Oh wait, not that one. Birmingham. And it's about as interesting as its website. Though, when you type it into Google Maps, uh, this picture comes up, which I enjoy. Honestly, it seems like a pleasant, sleepy little town. Not much happens, which is not all. <laughs> what? Why? Why, when you Google it, that if that comes up for your town, I'm never visiting your town. Enjoy. Honestly, it seems like a pleasant, sleepy little town. Not much happens, which is not always. A bad thing. Things were not so quiet though on a night in February uh, 2015 in a house on the 600 block of Banks Street just across the road from the police station. Why so many things and he said he didn't I don't think he said the exact date but what did he say February man Valentine's Day month supposed to be the month of what love right is it the month of love or is it just valentine's day and i'm just calling it the month of love but you would expect people are really really getting ready to be bromanced not a situation or a case like literally i mean this is the house and this is the police station cops just have to you know poke the head at the window and hey it was the crack uh and i guess this is downtown morris yippee a 911 call was made from that house. That was the house of Michael and Cindy Reese. Why did they call? Just shout. shout. That night was the 18th of February, which is just when I'm posting this video. Shame. I, uh, I timed that one well. Uh, that's when a 911 call was made at about 8 p.m. Bro, like, like he's, I'm thinking the same thing he's thinking. Like, literally, you could have ran across the street by the time they picked the phone up. That's crazy how close. And then what's even crazier is somebody would do that. You gotta be a crazy person to commit a crime 
right there across the street from the police station. I really think you're off, like super crazy. Well, uh, that's when a 911 call was made at about 8 p.m. Police department. Hey, um, I just got home and walked in the front door, and I don't know if the house has been broken into or what. The table's been knocked over. And okay, let's back I, I up just a little bit. Okay. My okay, who are you? Cindy, uh, Henderson Reese. Cindy Reese? Uh huh. What happened was that Cindy Henderson Reese, wife of Michael, arrived home after going to the Piggly Wiggly. What the fuck? My mama taught me how to shop at Piggly Wiggly. It's a real. <laughs> I don't do that, man. Do not do that about Piggly Wiggly. We used to have one in our small town too. Don't do that, man. Don't don't do that about Piggly Wiggly, bro. Everybody's who lived in a small town that had a, a Piggly Wiggly, their parents shopped there. Yes, they did. And you received the little papers that come to your house and you would flip through them and see what Piggly Wiggly had on sale. Yes, don't do not do that, bro. What the fuck? My mama taught me how to shop at Piggly Wiggly. It's a real store. <laughs> Gee whiz. It's a supermarket chain. That's mad. Anyways, she returned home after picking up a few bits and bobs to a ransacked house. She couldn't find her husband. The police wandered over to have a goo and saw the saw the upturned gaff and then peeking down the hall at the end of it toward the back door they saw someone slumped over. It was Michael Reese, 40 years old and he had been shot to death. As I said, Cindy and Michael had been married for five years at this point. Michael was Cindy's second husband, her first. Her first had sadly killed himself three years before she married Michael, and that had devastated her. Cindy was Michael's second wife after a divorce which too, uh, which too greatly affected him. As for work, Michael was in computer IT. He worked at a hospital in Birmingham, a position he'd had for the past two and a half years. Cindy, a senior accountant for the Jefferson County Commission. They didn't have children, but uh, but like, you know, a lot of folk down there, the church was a big part of their lives. They both were members of the Sardis Baptist Church in Big Hammy. Cindy, she was in fact the music director, right? We just had one of them, Diane Stoudy. Remember her? She was mental. And I guess I just had enough. Hey, I, 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 maybe I shouldn't be the one to say this, but them women in the choir be a little bit frisky, don't they? I'm just, hey, I'm just being honest. So if, I mean, if she's out there, because I don't know, man, the month of February, Valentine's Day month, he shot, something ain't right there. Just don't sit right with me. You know what I mean? And then she just shows up, finds him, something's knocked over. She didn't even seem distraught, really, right? She didn't. Not as distraught as someone was seen finding their husband or seeing that their house is broken into. You know what I mean? You'd have called, you'd have been running across the street, you'd have been going crazy. Michael had been shot once, back of the head, execution style, as they say. Things were turned over in the house. Like, it, it really did look like someone had been through, ransacked the place, like a burglary gone wrong. There was fast food on the table, relatively untouched, as if Michael, you know, he had just gone to get some grub, arrived home to to find a cat suit wearing bad lad robbing his shit, and then they killed him. Couldn't have happened, you know, to a nicer guy. Everybody said about Michael, you know, he was, he was generous, he was funny, he was kind, he was gentle. Is, yeah, it's perfect. And Mars, a safe city, so killers on the run would be big news and big concern, because that, that does not happen. It doesn't happen in Mars. So they spoke with Cindy a few hours uh, after the investigation began. They needed to know everything. Sorry. I need to know what did they take? My question. Did they ransack the house, shoot him, and just leave? Then why? And then does... Does he have, Michael have an insurance policy? Oh, well, what, what do you, what do you know of 
bouts happened at the house as far as uh, and, um, and she looked nervous see your hands fidgety nervous like you hiding something something's in the back of your mind something you might have done you seem pretty fidgety there lady as far as uh, and, has anybody told you that my pulse gone? They, they, they have been shot. They, they pretty much just kept asking me, you know, what happened when I got there. Um, and they told me you've been shot. But, but I didn't know. That, I mean, they, they never did really. It's. <laughs> I understand. It had been just a normal day. It was a Wednesday that day, so, you know, they both worked. And after work, Michael, he picked Cindy up. They went to her mother's house. Then they went to church. Then they went and got some fast food. And then they went home. But just as they pulled into the house, Cindy was like, ah, shit, forgot some. So she ran over to the Piggly Wiggly to pick up just a few groceries. Wasn't that convenient? So you just forgot something. You ran to the Piggly Wiggly, come back, and he's shot? Dead? Slumped over? She pulled out. Michael walked into the house. And then, and then, this. Short time later, she arrived home from the supermarket, and... Yeah. There was only two possible suspects if this wasn't random. Right, one was a contractor. They were having some work done on the house, um, and the other was Cindy's bit on the side. But when I was talking to you before, okay, and you were talking about, we were talking about Jeff, your face would actually light up. It was a pretty open secret at that time that Cindy was off uh, how do I put this delicately? Riding! She was riding someone else. Everyone knew, despite Cindy's denials. You know, she never would admit it. And there were rumors of who the guy was. Well, guess who? It was none other than the pastor of the Sardis. The pastor! Oh my god! I told y'all, man! These... <laughs> what, did I, what did I say? What did I say? These mute... These quiet... These mute... Listen, bro, they be frisky. These pastors, and then you know you live in a small town, so you know everybody in that small town is talking. They know. They know. You didn't think, man. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. So y'all think the pastor, yeah, whoa, whoa. I know the pastor, whoa. The pastor didn't Baptist do. church her and Michael went to. A Jeff Brown Tan Brown. They were both big, so they couldn't uh, exactly hide well in a car together. Even if onlookers wished uh, they had, because no one wants to see that, but people did. They said they would see them in the car getting it on numerous times, despite her protestations that you know nothing was going on to anybody who mentioned it or anybody who even thunk it. You know, <laughs> it must be joking. She would say that we went on walks. You know, her and Jeff went on walks together all the time. Well, they may not have been walking together, but they were certainly doing cardio. And so, when Michael ends up dead... Man, it's a thinker. She admitted the affair to the police. An emotional affair, though. Getting sticky? Come on now. Let me ask you, did it make it easier because you... She's smiling! Did y'all see that little smirk? She's smiling! Oh my god, and then I gotta know, bro, did the pastor do this? Come on now. Let me ask you, did it make it easier because you were uh, in love with Jeff to let your relationship with Michael be no, no. fall to the side? Or? No. She would say her marriage was on the rocks. Michael, you know, he was more interested in games than he was her. Sex is temporary, but games are eternal. But of course, would she cheat? Jeff, would she ever? Would she fall? And Jeff, 
you know, was a pastor. He was a God-fearing man, but he feared the devil even more. So why would he murder? She even left the church due to the rumors. Eventually, Jeff, too, also due to the rumors, which, let me remind you, were true. Well, Jeff was actually fired. Well, I mean, you know, you couldn't have a hypocritical person lecturing people on, you know, good values and maybe not committing adultery, but thankfully, you know, it's rare that it happens. There's very few hypocritical people in religion. I say sarcastically with great relish. How long have, have you known Cindy? Where did y'all meet? Um, I was the pastor candidate at uh, Sardis Baptist Church. He even sound like a pastor too. No, he got that pastor voice. Um, back in August of 2013. She was the uh, worship uh, minister, worship leader. Was she with? Oh, I bet she was the worship leader. <laughs> you made sure she was in the front. All right, my bad, my bad. Last one. Michael, at that point in time, yes. Oh, was she already married? Yes. Then Cindy finally admitted that after they both left the church, it became, as the late uh, Olivia Newton-John would say, physical, physical, let's get into physical, let me hear your body talk, let's get physical, comma, physical. But she was trying to make it work. She even told Michael about what was going on. And these 40-year-olds even went to Disneyland for their anniversary to try and patch things up. We tried something designed for children to save our marriage, and we're all out of ideas. They soon spoke with Jeff. Jeff had an alibi, however, for the time of Michael's death. He was over 50 miles away. Jeff had been a Marine at one stage, later a cop, then a pastor, followed by a barber, hairdresser, then a pest control guy. That's ironic. What an eclectic career. Wow. It'd be more impressive if he did all that. In reverse, though, he was a jack of all trades, though jackass of all trades might be more appropriate. But people said Jeff was around a lot, like to the point of watching the Reese house a lot. Stalker type shit. After Cindy and Jeff left their church, he followed the Reese's to their new one. And not only that, word was Jeff had a few honeys around town. Seems like Michael was aware of Jeff trying to steal his woman, and that Jeff might use violence to get his way. Were you trying to get him to leave her? No, uh, no I was trying to. We, we developed safe words uh, for um, uh, and uh, safe words. They developed safe words? Or does he mean code words? Like, I don't think that's where that goes. I don't think that's the proper term. Was it safe words or code words? We tried to. We, I, I did talk to her, like, listen, dude, it's not worth it. Where would you would you admit or would you say that that his uh, curiosity or his suspicions were warranted? I mean, that's, of course they were. Michael started to realize he had a target on his back, especially when word went around that Jeff had offered some dudes his car if they took care of Michael. Then they dug a little deeper. It was a burglary gone wrong, they initially thought, but nothing was stolen. Nothing major anyway, like some small pieces of jewelry, but you know, they had some valuables still left. It was kind of like, uh, let's mess up the house, but I still want to keep this shit, so like, just maybe throw the blanket around, pour some cornflakes on the floor, nothing serious. The door was not busted in. That 911 call. The table's been knocked over. Okay. He was literally at the end of the hall. It's she, she would have seen him. Seems like she wanted to ensure she wasn't the one who found him. And the contractor they had worked in was confirmed to be away at that time. And honestly, the excuse she had that she wasn't there, that she had to run to the store. He didn't have any more ham. I didn't know he had bologna. He must have bought that. Oh. I mean, when you run low on ham and bologna, bro, that's an emergency. I, I, that's a, that's an emergency. I could, I bought the orange juice because I didn't know how much orange juice he had. Seemed weak at best. Well, first of all, she just arrived home with fast food. So you probably eat that first before you go. It'll just get cold. Come on now. Second of all, the things she said she ran to the supermarket for, uh, you know, just some, some milk and eggs and sandwich meat, that kind of shit. They had that shit in their fridge. 
though, so she, you know. They later went and searched Cindy's office and found she had a picture of her and her husband. Fine. And a picture just below that of her and her lover. Not so fine. They also found she had been uh, paying for an apartment for Jeff. Oh. A little love shack. The night of the murder, Jeff had texted Cindy, Keep me posted. Like they were... Now when you go to church this Sunday, which is tomorrow, I want y'all to look to your left at your... Oh, no, that's my left. Look to your left at your neighbor, and then look to the right at your neighbor, because one of them may be getting it on with somebody in the church. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo! We're expecting something. Like, maybe they're expecting something that would not be tolerable to the life of Michael Reese. They also found on phone records of Cindy that she had called Jeff that night. What? She called him and just left the phone on so that Jeff could listen in to everything that happened that night, including maybe something a little like this. She even spoke to him before the operator picked up the 911 call. Oh, I'm almost there. Police department. Hey. Cell phone records also indicated that Jeff was not, he was not 50 miles away, as he said. But he, he wasn't in the house either, but he was close to the house. He was probably in the vicinity of Mars, or at least his phone was probably watching nearby. What the police suspect happened is that- And this is all across the street from a police station. Oh man, y'all are just, ah. Oh. <laughs> Every time I think about that, man, I just want to throw my computer against the wall. Are you serious? Are you serious? That Michael and Cindy, they arrived home, you know, after picking up food that night. Um, then Michael, he went into the back of the house to let the dogs in. And while he was kneeling down, Cindy... She did it. Before you said you went out to go to the pig, you almost started crying. Because you knew exactly, you knew exactly when and what happened. And it terrifies you. It terrified you, you, you know. So, again, I'm, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry that this has happened. Well, will you talk to me and let me tell me what happened, okay? I'm here to help you. Then she messed up the place a little and went to the Piggly Wiggly. Then she came home and called 911. I can put you exactly where you were at that point in time because as she's walking up to the door, I'm going to be able to find out exactly where you are. So I'm not, my timeline is not going to be off. Now, whether or not she did it or that you did it or that y'all helped each other, we're going to figure that out. I promise you. Who think that one of the two killed you or her killed the guy? Shot him in cold blood. He didn't see it coming. Just shot him down like he was an animal. Shot him in the back of the head like he was a pig or something. I think you or her did it. You said what? I think you or Cindy did it. And I respectfully disagree. That's your mind. It was less than a month after the death of Michael Reese that both Cindy and Jeff were pulled over and arrested. Both faced murder charges. They both pleaded not guilty to the charges. Jeff, in a deal with prosecutors, agreed to testify against Cindy. We knew that was coming. We knew that was coming. The way that, that cop did a great job on that interrogation. The way he was talking to him, I knew he was going to fold and tell on her. You, you seen it coming, bro. You seen it coming. And he pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter. This was in August 2016. Under that agreement, 20 years and the slammer, bucko. Cindy's trial began in November 2016. Now, no one really knows who was the shooter. No one really knows exactly what happened that night, but it's believed that it was Cindy who killed her husband. But of course, her defense said it was Jeff. A, a Jeff, 
the defense said, who was obsessed with Sydney. He stalked her. He would not let her go. And when it looked like, you know, the Reese's marriage might be mending, you know, hey, Disneyland, uh, well, you know, he wasn't too keen on that. After all, she was paying for his apartment because he was in the middle of divorcing his wife. So she was his cash cow. Apparently, uh, accountants for the Jefferson County, you know, commission office pay very well. He was inside the home when the Reese's arrived, they said, and he blew Michael away. See, the angle of the bullet that killed Michael was in a downward trajectory. Cindy would have been too short. Not Jeff, though. Also, there was no evidence on Cindy, nor gunshot residue. Also, when arrested, both uh, Cindy and Michael were on a $100,000 bond. Cindy got herself out of jail. Well, she didn't pay for Jeff. He had to remain in jail till the trial, which wasn't particularly long. But, you know, Cindy's defense said, um, you know, he was just pissed off at Cindy for not bailing him out too, so he was happily, happily agreed to, you know, join the prosecution. On the other hand, Jeff, testifying for the prosecution, said that during their little escapades together, Cindy always talked about killing Michael. She wanted him gone. And she asked Jeff a couple of times to find a hitman for her. Then the shooting happened. Cindy roughed the place up, then met Jeff at a gas station, gave him the gun and some jewelry. Cell phone records, of course, though, disputed this. Jeff was, or his phone was, very near the home indeed. Ultimately, after 90 minutes of deliberation, Cindy was found guilty. She was sentenced to 40 years in prison. Whew. All of that, and neither one of you can be with each other. So what, 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 what did you win? What did you win? I don't get it. Of course, mother headed to prison for decades for her husband's murder. Today, a judge sentenced Cindy Reese for her role in a fatal love triangle. Sitting in shackles this morning, Cindy Reese faced a judge awaiting her punishment. Two years ago, her husband Michael Reese was gunned down in the couple's Morris home. Last month, a jury convicted his wife Cindy in his death. Today, Reese received 40 years in prison. When her husband was murdered, she and former pastor Jeff Brown were having an affair. They made sure they said pastor, right? <laughs> they made sure they said that. Prosecutors argued the murder was the casualty of a tragic love triangle. Reese is eligible for parole in 10 years. Her family pledges to fight against her freedom. Once again, in this story, uh, we see what we always see. People are, people are never driven to murder. People drive themselves to murder. Rather than divorcing, or because they're jealous, or because they're greedy, they just decide to take another human uh, life, which I, you know, for most people is pretty unthinkable. Especially when it's your husband, wife, child, parent, whatever. Someone who, you know, you, kind of, you, you love for decades and then you're like, eh, maybe not. Regardless of who killed Michael, there was absolutely no reason to. And either they could have gone off together, Cindy could have easily divorced Michael, or if Jeff really was stalking Cindy, he could have just had a wank and fucked off. I can't even put myself in their shoes because they're so friggin' beyond normal thought. You have to really be when you think, you know what, I'll just kill. Seems like there's a lot of people like that though out there because I still have quite a lot of stories to tell. It's crazy, man. First of all, rest in peace, Michael Reese. Condolences to his family. You know, seemed like a nice guy, good guy. Was doing everything he could, providing what he could, doing what he could for somebody who just didn't love him back to probably the way he loved her. Uh, am I sitting here saying, I don't know their situation, I don't know the experiences they went through or the problems they had in their situation. I do know he didn't de deserve to go out like that, though. And if you was feeling this other dude, then why just cut ties? Not, not do that. Not take him out. That's all y'all could come up with? Here's a thought. Just go be together. Leave him. Something no, and now look at y'all. Y'all ain't y'all still ain't together. So what did you accomplish? Like uh, I don't know, man. But it still blows my mind that all of this happened across the street from a police station. 
Yo, t small towns are never short for a good story, man. I'm telling y'all. Or some craziness. I'm telling y'all. Yeah, those who come from, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. So, but y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what you think and stick around and stay tuned to the next one. I'm gone. Peace.